everyone, Joe here from ActionX. Welcome to What's in the Tube, or welcome back if this is your uh, fifth season two episode review for High School Musical, The Musical, The Series. Once again, this week's felt very long for me. It's been a very rough week for me, um, I'll say to that, but... I can always count on High School Musical to cheer me up, and it definitely did with the Quinceanero as we um, explore. Honestly, I think this is probably the best episode of the season thus far, in my, in my opinion. Um, I didn't have really much of an issue with it. Well, scratch that. I think this might have been the best episode so far in season two. Everyone has a purpose, everyone has a direction, and they've achieved everything on their front. And we're not even at the halfway mark of the season yet, so I'm very excited. I was very excited for this one after last week. I, last week definitely left me with like, oh, we got maybe a couple more strings, plot strings to pull on. And I, I, well, I was very happy to see that there was a couple things I, was, I wasn't really happy with and just how things were kind of rushed a bit. But then now that we're here, it's like, yeah, everything's paying off. Everything's worth it. So I just want to talk about the episode. So let's go through the butcher recap and talk about this week's episode of the show. So we begin at the barn and i'm just thinking are we doing a halloween episode in the middle of june it's summer i mean sure yeah gravity falls did summer ween back in 2012 2013 but like come on that was a different time period very different no they're in seth's barn um gina and him summoned them to pitch this proposal of a plan for carlos's upcoming 16th birthday which will be dubbed his quinceanero as he never, he never got to have one the year before because I guess he just this was like pre the show so he didn't have that many friends so um, in that in that term, in that world so they want to throw something for him uh, also yeah um, obviously um, Nini's back in town she's fully back uh, she's happy she's included I kind of actually now that I'm thinking about I kind of understand but I'm a, I was a little bit annoyed with the over eagerness of Nini being back in town obviously yeah I know. She's been away for two months. I get that. Well, not really two months, like a month and a half, like six weeks away. I, I get that, but she seemed a little bit too overeager to be back in town. You know, she did give up this master shift of a program um, to be with her family and, uh, of course, friends again. So I'll just say that much. Um, everyone's in, obviously, because they care about Carlos and they want to pull this off. Seb wants to make this all a big surprise party, so they have to do their best to not spoil anything about it. So, But they all agree. And we proceed forward with there. I believe we head straight to back to the school. We're doing another day of rehearsals. Everyone's just kind of in full gear. You know, we're this is full rehearsal mode. Uh, Nini's just sliding back in. I'm, I'm presuming she's catching up with her homework because she's got that late transfer. She's I'm pretty sure like, oh, you got time. You can finish six weeks of homework in this short amount of time period, which kind of sounds crazy, but... Uh, that's the, that's the cards they're dealt with there. Um, Seth is still trying to plant the seeds of not letting Carlos know that there is a big party coming up in the next couple, in the next couple days uh, by disappointing his expectations by just telling, oh, right, can you just come over to my house on your birthday to just help me focus on the farm? Yeah, that's what every everyone wants to hear on their birthday. Let's do manual labor on the day of your birthday. I mean, sure, yeah, Bob. Some people nowadays they just work for their birthdays. It's nothing special, but some people just want to take the day off. Like me, I, I just I don't want to work on my birthday. I don't. I mean, I think I, I worked last year on my birthday. It sucked. I never want to do it again. But hey, that money, that paycheck came through pretty well. I'm trying to think if we get any real real scenes in the school. Oh yeah, we did. Um, Gina is um going over her outfit for the upcoming dance number at the Quinceanero with um Courtney, and they're just having a, a very plain old discussion about things. But Gina kind of drops that whole like you know uh, she drops a the word goodbye party instead of like you know birthday party or surprise party, and she manages to write that off. I'm like that's kind of suspicious. Like why is she saying goodbye? Like, that's kind of out of left field, to be honest with you. So, I believe from there we head to Ricky's house, I believe. I'm not sure if we get any other scenes at the school, per se. I'm trying, I'm trying to think very... Oh, yeah, we do, get, we do get a scene with Miss Jan at the coffee shop. She's interacting with Zach, I believe that's his name, her ex-boyfriend from when they both went to high school. They're having that little bit of a rivalry, rivalry so to spiel um that sort of thing it's, it's very playful it's not like a mutual hatred they're just like hey i'm gonna try and beat you in this competition i gotta win 
that sort of, that sort of like vibe. And that's sort of what you're getting out of it. So, but when she leaves the um, the other girl, the one who transferred the transfer crowd, they mentioned her name in this episode. I just completely forgot it. Uh, she just says like, "I hate her," and the and Zach's like, "Relax, your time will come." <laughs> this is like some Emperor Darth Vader shit. Like it's just a musical. I mean, come on, it's just a musical. Relax, don't worry about it that much. But okay, so th- from there we head to Ricky's house where. He and Nini are kind of like setting up these centerpieces for the tables for the for the party. Um, Ricky's dad's just kind of vibing in there, like, yeah, you know, everything's kind of you know stable. You know, they lost the house, they're in an apartment, they kind of downgraded, but eh, it's not entirely that bad, N- not really. Um, we we just, we just did like a lovely back and forth with Nini and Ricky, just like joking around like any other couple would. It was very nice and sweet. Um, but however, Ricky's dad apparently is tagging along for this event since he's got nothing else to do. I guess he doesn't have any adult friends. He's just going to chaperone this very, honestly, in any of my parties that I had in high school, like the very low key ones, actually, I act like I had these big extravagant parties. I didn't, I didn't at all. I had these very light parties. Uh, me, I never asked my parents to chaperone cause I, that was just awkward. I don't know why Ricky didn't have the heart to just tell his dad, no, please don't come. Don't embarrass me, but he does. So with that being said, however, um, he, he tags along. He wears a whole suit and everything. Like, dude, it's just a, it's just a chaperone gear. You could just wear like a, a casual button-up shirt with a sweater. It's still winter in Utah, so you, you're still fine in my opinion. Um, so for them, they had. I think they all head off back to. They all head to the barn. Oh no, no not just quite yet. Um, at the pizza shop, Ashley and um, Big Red are setting up. A bunch of pizzas for this thing, and I'm like, I'm actually craving some pizza right now. To be honest with you, if it wasn't for the fact that I worked out and I'm trying to like be moderately healthy, plus last week I had I ate a shit ton of Italian food, so I'm trying to take a break from that. Um, I honestly could go for a slice of pizza right now. So this is me. So they're prepping this up. They're having like another like boyfriend girlfriend ba- banter, loving this moment. Carlos tries to look for them, and like the most obvious like, way of like, oh, conveniently Carlos looks to the left first and not the right. Where Ashley and um, Big Red were clearly visible, but you know, and despite that, even and even during the off-camera scene, Carlos was a bit disappointed that okay, no one's made plans for me for my birthday, and I try, I'm trying to surprise plan with someone, and no one's around. I'm very saddened by this, <laughs> and he has no choice but to go to Seb's farm right now. So at the bar now, everyone's getting ready, everyone's getting situated, um, that sort of spiel. Sorry, I'm saying spiel a lot. I'm just... My brain's a little bit fried right now. It doesn't hurt that I'm running on four hours of sleep. I apologize. It's not even a long day type thing. It's I'm actually at the midway point of my day. Um, and it, I've already been up... For, I've, I've only slept for four hours, so... And I'm not getting any sleep tonight, too. So, I'm going to be dead by the next day. But anyway... Uh, also another point of development EJ finally has his development I'm finally happy he finally got something to do he, he's joined the AV club under the the other teacher's recommendation he's just been chilling out there learning some skills it's nice it's, it kind of sucks that he's learning this like very late into his senior year so this isn't really going to make much of an impact on him for his high school career maybe for his college career but it is nice that EJ's finally getting something to do I mean Finally, it took like so many episodes. Like, I'm happy. I'm, I'm very thankful. I'm, I'm very happy. So he's off. He's um doing these um video memories for um for for Carlos for like this big montage at the end of the party. Uh, he's slowly getting everyone. Everything I've noticed that Ricky wants to ask. Um, Miss Jen, if she if she could put Nini in the play in some capacity, just so that she's like actually involved in the musical again. Um, she he, Ricky asks this hypothetical to um, Gina, who's rehearsing the the big dance number. And I think I, while this was a hypothetical, I think Gina took this a little bit too personally because Ricky used the phrase, "What if we were dating? Like, how would you react?" And and Gina kind of really focused too much on the on the words, "Yeah, but I'm not your girlfriend." Like she wants to be. I feel like Ricky. I feel like Ricky was one of the reasons she wanted to stay for. But since obviously his heart's not for her, like that's not gonna happen. So that's definitely kind of like an issue per se for them to, to deal with. Well, for Gina to deal with it at least. And I believe um, 
Ricky's dad and the professor teacher. Right, yeah, I, I'm sorry, my, my 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 words are not working today. My nose is bothering me for some reason. They're just talking like, it's just so weird. Miss Jen has at least two people, two men competing for her. I, it's just weird. Like Miss Jen is beautiful. I will admit that, but really, two men and maybe even three with Zach. I'm just thinking. Sorry, really? Like this is this is kind of weird for me to, to to admit and see. So that's just my that's just my words. Just just to be honest with you on that. I believe that I believe it's almost show time. I think. Oh yeah, um, there a little gossip section between Nini, Courtney, and Big Red. Big Red just drops out. Oh, you and Howie have been like really vibing off each other lately. It's like you two really like each other, and Cor and Nini's just like happy, like her best friend has potentially found someone. Courtney's like, no, 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 it's nothing. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's just, it's just, and also, but however, my only critis, critique of the scene is that Nees is being a little bit too over eager of being back in town again. Like, you know, she gets to be with everyone again. She gets to be involved in things again. Like, that's a little too on the nose, over eagerness type thing. Um, I do respect where she's coming from, but it's just coming from like a really too much of like over eagerness in my opinion. But anyway, that's just my, my words on the matter. I then yeah so then Seb brings in Carlos big surprise Carlos is so amazing surprise and then we get the first dance song of this of the episode where it's Gina performing the quinceanero dance that um, Carlos came up with when he was 12 13 years old even bringing up an old IG photo um, video I'm not entirely sure if this was based on the actor's real life thing or if this was just like a different actor because like this actor looks strikingly familiar and reasonable to the actual Carlos. It could be the same guy. Could not be. I did not do my research at all before this, so I apologize. But even with that being said, it's a, it's an amazing dance number, having the Hispanic culture in there, just see, hearing the song, seeing the dance. I'm like, this is just hands down. Great, great number, everyone. Just great. Really great. And then I believe we segue to the second one. Um, also, yeah, there's... There's a one scene. There's one scene where um, EJ is still capturing video for the for the memory collage at the end of the night, and Jean is kind of like a little bit bummed out about about the, about her inevitably leaving everyone. And EJ gets a hint of it, but he doesn't really follow up on it. And, and he's about to just start the video, and Gina's is like, "That's it. You're that's all you're gonna ask me on how I feel." It's kind of how feeling that Gina's starting to feel left out again, in, in a matter of speaking. Um, and then we get the second number where Seb decides to play a rendition of the Moana song. How far ago? I, I completely forgot about that. What's funny is that I initially heard the song. Oh, it's a high school musical song. We got to have a high school musical song here. And I'm like, wait, is this a Hannah Montana song? Like, oh, I'm going to get some Hannah Montana vibes off here. And then I heard like the how, I, how far I go. And I'm just like, oh, it's for Moana. I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. I'm like. I'm sorry. I, I legit forgot my songs. I apologize. Um, afterwards, Carlos is in distraught. He's incredibly happy and incredibly overwhelmed with emotion that, like, hey, you know, all this happened for people. That, this entire party happened for people that just understood Carlos and knew what he wanted. And that's all he just ever wanted from this from this event. However, also, in culture of a quinceanera, quinceanero, um, the godmother has to be in, a, in attendance to uh, embark on this ceremony of womanhood or manhood in, in this case. And Carlos never got the chance to, well, I don't think he had, he was picked out a godmother. So he has the choice of like picking out his own and he picks Miss Jen to be his godmother. And which kind of really makes sense considering their relationship. And Miss Jen just starts, well, she has a ball in tears on camera, but she just off camera. Just like, you see the mascara dripping. I'm just, damn, this mascara was pretty cheap. No offense. Um, so even after that, that um, the teacher um, gives a pat on the shoulder to EJ for like a, a pretty good job. You know, that EJ managed to hold his own today on this, you know, recording AV related matter. So um, definitely a good step in the right step for EJ. Like he's doing something worthwhile with his character. He's, he's getting somewhere. I'm happy. Uh, while, but however, while Miss Janice is taking random um, photos of, of, just, of just of her students... 
she um, gets a video from from IG from Zach apparent that apparently showcases that North High is going to do their own rendition of the Beauty of the Beast and also the big wolf wolf um, scene that they were going to actually do, recreate. They took. I think they bought them. I think they actually bought them, and I'm just thinking, oh my god, like this is war. Like, I don't think this was Zack's plan to do Beauty and the Beast. I, th I think they just wanted to do Little Mermaid. But, damn, like, the the matter of, like, you know, sh this one girl just hates Miss Jen so much that she's willing to let her lose and suffer is just, damn. Like, that's just, that's a big move. Uh, and then Miss Jen thinks herself, like, I, I have a talent that casts, but I'm now I'm going up against an, an entire competition like an actual rival who's doing the same source material with a bigger budget. So now the question is, how does she top herself? And that only means one thing. She needs to bring Nini into the play, which at late Ricky's like, he can finally work with her again, which is awesome. Uh, but however, the, the last moment to keep an eye on is that during the end, uh, while everyone's just dancing, Gina gets a call, on, a, on a call with her mother saying that, oh yeah, sure, everything's fine with the, I'm, I can't wait to come back home. Indicating that she's going to leave, um, not East High. And that's where the um, episode ends. So I still believe this is um, the season two strongest episode yet. We we got every character fi fi firing on all cylinders. We're getting direction. We're just seeing things developing slowly. I'm happy on that. We're getting more stakes in terms of like with the musical competition. Now that's an actual musical war. Just seeing the Hispanic. Like, again, I'm, I'm being biased here because I'm Hispanic, but... Just seeing the Hispanic elements in that one original dance number was just so freaking perfect. The rendition of How Far I'll Go was, ultra, was pretty solid. And even though it's not a halfway mark, this definitely does feel like the rising action. Like we're, next week, hopefully, is going to definitely bring that fire to like bring us to like, okay, we're at the halfway mark. Here's what we're going to do next. And I can't wait to see that. I really can. Um, and I'm really happy on that. But, and I think for next... Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm also a little bit curious to why they didn't like really tackle with, you know, Nini figuring out that, like, oh, Ricky is, was always feeling like this. And he didn't tell me like, I'm, I'm kind of happy they're not full, pulling that string, but I'm also, I'm also curious why they aren't pulling that string. Cause yeah, Ricky was hiding a pretty sizable chunk of emotions from her that, you know, when you're in a relationship, you gotta be open with one another. And that involves sharing those feelings. So him not getting those is kind of like just a little bit like little bit eye batting for me a little bit like in terms of like just my opinion um but yeah but either way this was a, i think the strongest episode of the show yet and of the whole season i'll say and i can't wait for to see how next week goes so for me i'm gonna give this episode two thumbs up i really enjoyed it so let me know in the comments below what did you think of this week's episode of high school musical the music of the series did you like it did you hate it did you, let me know i'm always open to conversation down below i want to talk to people about it so Slash everyone in my group doesn't really watch the show. So if you're not aware, this has been What's in the Two from Max Shanks, reviewing every episode in the second season of High School Musical, the musical, the series. If you want to know what we're doing overall in What's in the Two, besides our HSM TS, no, HSM D T M T S reviews, we are doing Nancy Drew episode reviews for season two each and every Thursday mornings after a brand new episode on Wednesday nights on the CW or free the next day on the CW apps. However, those have currently wrapped up to a close, but this coming Thursday, we are doing a season three predictions. Um, yeah, that's going to basically predict things for season three um, that we're going to be reviewing this fall, hopefully. And yeah, that's basically it. And that will end our Nancy Drew programming. I believe I haven't announced what the plan is for summer yet for What's in the Tube just quite yet. So I won't say more there. So I think I'm going to do that later the channel, I believe, for Monday or Tuesday. So stay tuned on that. Uh, we are doing also Walker episode reviews each and every Friday mornings out there. Brand new episode on Thursday nights on the CW or for the next day on the CW app. But if you only care about High School Musical, you're in luck. We'll be back next week with another episode review. Can't wait. Halfway mark next week. See how things go. But until then, again, this has been What's in the Tube from Action X. If you want to see more of us, please subscribe to Action X on YouTube.com. Ring that bell for notification when our next HSM review is live, which is normally each and every Saturday mornings. Like, favorite, share this episode review if you want to, but it helps us get it out there to other members of the Wildcat family. Tells you to discover us, helps us beat up that YouTube algorithm that I hate ever so much, as well as sharing is always for free on the internet. Follow us on social media to stay up to date with any sort of updates for the channel. 
And until then, for all you all you Wildcats out there, I'll see y'all next week on the next episode review. But until then, stay safe out there, be good to each other, and as always, peace out.